how you should invest in your 401k. All right, so I'm working with somebody very near and dear to my heart <laughs> who started a new job, has a 401k plan opportunity, and they had some good funds in there uh, from good fund companies, but they, uh, they were very lacking on the diversification that they should have. So they have American funds, they have Vanguard, they got Fidelity, and I think a Dodge and Cox, I can't remember. But anyway, so they had American funds, uh, new, not new perspective, uh, European Pacific Growth Fund was a great fund. They had the Vanguard Mid Cap Index. They had the Vanguard Large Cap Growth Index. They had a small cap index of some sort. Um, and another international fund from uh, American Funds, too. I forgot what it was. American Funds, I forgot. But anyway, so they had about six or seven funds. <laughs> but they didn't have uh, just an S&P 500 index. I mean, they even have Vanguards in there. I'm like, how do you not have the S&P 500 index? So in this case, we're stuck with choosing the large cap growth fund as an index, the European Pacific fund as an index, uh, not as an index, as international, that's fine. Uh, mid cap, I think it was a mid cap value index. I just is nuts, nuts. I'm sitting there thinking who is in charge of this stuff? Like some of these plan providers is crazy. All right, so what you gotta do, now they did have the Fidelity four in one fund and I have no idea what that was. It looked to be about 85% stocks, 15% bonds. And after I just said, I'm presuming it's gonna have a divert, it's gonna be diversified in some regard. So anyway, so I said, all right, we'll just do that and just, well, just take it for what it's worth. Cause you know, no, normally I would not do any bonds, but if that's the only way I can get large cap of value stocks in there, I don't know how else to do it. Anyway, so what you should do. All right, so you gotta make sure you have large cap, not growth or value, just large cap. I'm telling you, everybody will say large cap value does better. And yeah, value has performed better. That is a fact historically. Will value perform better in the future? Man, I got no idea. You have no idea. We just don't know. So the idea that value is inherently better, uh, we, we don't know. And so you buy growth and value, in the, i.e. in a plain vanilla S&P 500 index. That's what you do. Now, on, so now you got your domestic large cap stocks taken care of. Now, uh, the S&P 500 represents about 70% of the U.S. stock market, all right? So that leaves you 30% without. So you don't have any mid, you have some mid caps, but not many mid caps and certainly don't have any small caps. So you want to find a fund that's also geared towards small and mid caps as well. An extended market index, for instance. Um, don't pick values or growth. Now, everyone will say small cap value has done better. Eh, take away a, like a three or four year time from like 78 to 82. I think it might be 76 to 82. Small cap value did, if you take away those six years, the small cap value did not outperform. It's just a six year time frame for which it did, which I've done other videos on so you take away that and uh and small cap value just performs just like everything else all right so you got to get a either a total stock index and i don't think your 401k plan will have that i know the tsp doesn't if it does that's great and then you're done total stock index for the domestic side but you get a total stock index fund or you get a mix of s p 500 and small and mid cap and if they don't have a uh, extended market because the extended market index is small in mid caps, all right? Again, you take the S&P 500, that represents 70% of the domestic stock market. The extended market will represent the other 30. So if they don't have one total stock index, which is 70, 30, large to small and mid, uh, then you combine them. You get a one large cap and one small and mid-sized companies. Hope that helps, that's a big deal. You gotta make sure you have some small companies in there because small companies are where some significant growth can come from. I mean, think about it. Amazon at one time was a small company, so it wasn't Apple and whatnot. So that's now you're done with the domestic side. Now you just find an international fund. And uh, Fidelity Diversified International is a great fund. I love American uh, funds, European Pacific growth. A great fund. Vanguard have the, uh, I think they have the Pacific, I forgot what it's called, the Pacific, something like that, uh, Vanguard. And, and then just buy those. Those are, those are going to be large cap uh, oriented blue chip international funds. And then you're done, man. You buy, so let's just say we got, we got to pick three funds large cap, uh, domestic, SP 500, 50% in that, and 25% in the other two. You got 75% stocks. Uh, domestic and 25% international blue chips, and you are done. If you want to add a emerging markets, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Add emerging markets, you take 50%. Uh, I'd probably do 40%. What's that? 40, and then we got 20, 20, 20. Yeah, I'd probably do 40, 20, 20, 20. That's what I'd do. I'd, 
Yeah, I'd probably do that. That's too much. I'd probably do 50% large cap domestic stocks, uh, 25%, yeah, 25% small and mid-sized domestic stocks, and then split the us between the international and the emerging markets. That'd be 12.5% each, I think. Yeah, that's what I'd do. So, anyway, so now you got 100% stocks. You're split across the board. You got index funds. Um, now, some of these firms will offer you an opportunity to pay for their management services. And uh, you can see I'm on the tennis court, by the way. My kid's over here practicing, um, which is fun. He likes to play with one of his little buddies. A beautiful day here in Georgia. All right, some of these firms will offer you a 401k fee to, to run your money. Man, don't do that. There's no reason to pay for it. I'm just, I'm telling you, don't do that. Um, you're paying 35 basis points or something like that. You're not going to get anything extraordinary you know, relative to what you can do on your own, which is simply uh, doing these index funds. Don't pay 35 basis points to have someone run your 401k money. They still have, they're still going to be subject. Well, I don't know. I was going to say they're still going to be subject to the same investments that you, are, you have access to. I don't know that to be true per plan. So, but no reason to pay somebody. It's just not, I, I hear a lot of people, they do that. Um, all right. So lastly, we talked a, lot, a couple weeks ago about what to do two years before retirement to build up your cash holdings. And I tell you, you look for a stable value fund. Look for a stable value fund. Don't look at a bond fund. Don't look at high yield. Look for, can you still see me? Yeah. Look for a stable value fund. A stable value fund is based an insurance product, basically a guaranteed insurance contract, a GIC, uh, that the provider will provides to you uh, essentially under the auspices that it will never go down in value. Now, it might not ever go up. And, you know, in theory, anything can go down in value. But stable value fund is about the best thing you can get uh, for a 401k for you to build up your cash. And so if you're two years out from retirement or you want to have a cash component or you want to have bonds, forget the bonds. Just go straight to the stable value. That's the way to go. I'm telling you right now. Bonds aren't, aren't going to do you any good. Stable value fund, the barbell approach. You have stocks and you have cash. Cash being a stable value fund is perfect, especially in this day and age when they, we have a flat yield curve. So you got basically the same interest rate on a stable value fund than you would on a long-term bond fund. So why would you take a long-term bond fund in your portfolio when you're not being rewarded for the risk that you're doing, which is investing in longer-term bonds? So do the stable value fund for your cash or fixed income point, and then just follow the model like I just said right there with a 40 or 50, 25, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks now.